Part of the mentality of medicine is a fix-it mentality. We are living in this sort of consumer um, society where um, there are black and white solutions to things. You know, if you can't fix a problem, then you know you you don't want to deal with it because it's not something practical. I think people have um, put a much lower priority on the caring aspects of community, where we're now facing up to chronic disease problems that cannot be fixed. So we have to live with them, and how do we live better with them? So I think pain control gets into that category of things. There tends to be a culture in health systems that health is about curing people. If only it was that simple. How many diseases in medicine do we really cure? Very few. For example, you take cancer. In the developed world, 50% of people who get cancer die within five years. So death and dying is an integral part of the cancer journey for almost the majority of cancer patients. Now that's not a pleasant thing to be saying, but so much of the dialogue about cancer care and integrated cancer care rightly focuses on prevention and cure and treatment but so little focuses on care of the dying. Healthcare education, again, ignores pain. They sort of say, well, if we're going to cure you, it's set up to cure. And if we're going to cure you or manage your illness, uh, the, the pain will look after itself. Modern medicine, till palliative care came into force, had precious little to offer if cure was not possible. But that's forgetting the basic purpose of medicine, which is to not only to cure when possible, but also to relieve symptoms and to comfort the patient as much as possible. When we use words like quality of life, um, you know, people who have cancer, who think that they could be cured, will say to you, I don't care about my quality of life, I care about my quantity of life. Then there's a point at which they then realize that their quantity of life is going to be shortened. And then they do care about their quality of life. I think some of the more significant stories come from people who have, have actually come to me and said, uh, Dr. Cleary, I want physician-assisted suicide. And when you ask the question why, it's fear of cancer pain. So this guy was a, um, he came from uh, south of Madison. He had a head and neck cancer. Um, we tried some chemotherapy, it had responded initially and then recurred. And at this stage, he didn't have pain. And he said to me, uh, Dr. Cleary, I'm a member of the Hemlock Society. I want you to end my life. I'm ready. And I said, why are you asking me that question? And he said, because I don't want to have a long, painful death. And so we talked and we discussed it. I gave him some reading material. We had long conversation. And I said, come back and see me in a week and we'll talk some more. And he came back and I, again, the positive statement that I make is I can't keep you pain free, but I will do everything as a physician in my power to reduce your pain. And he said, that's all I need to hear. So this man went home at this stage, no pain medicines. He got more pain over the next six months. He ended up on about um, 20 milligrams of oxycodone three times a day, the sustained release version, and was very, very comfortable. In that time, he baptized two grandchildren and really had a very, very, very good quality of life in the interim and died relatively pain-free. You know, I think one of the challenges for healthcare professionals who've been dealing with patients with advanced illnesses for years when they haven't had access to pain medications, it becomes normal for them to see patients in pain. They don't have a sense of being able to do something differently and they've learned to cope with it. So as you change people's awareness, we've actually had many physicians break into tears when they realize what they've been doing. And it's important to help them understand they did the best they could with what they had. Now we have a new toolkit and we can do things differently. Human illness is not just an aberration in the DNA, a bacterium that gets in the wrong place, a malfunction of a muscle somewhere. It's a person experiencing the consequences of that disease. Medicine, good medicine, takes care of someone in their physical, emotional, practical, and spiritual fears. Those are all the responsibilities of a doctor. 
They're all the responsibilities of a nurse and the healthcare system as a whole.